Everyone has a good story to tell, and you know it is a good story when the person leans in and says, see what had happened was, and then tells the story. This podcast provides those opportunities to tell those types of stories in education. The stories will be from the good, the bad, and everything in between. We wanted to do this podcast to showcase stories in education and to give flowers to educators who deserve recognition for their excellence. Our guests will feature parents, students, teachers, administrators, and just about anyone who is involved in education. These stories will inspire you, challenge you, and help you to reflect on your practice of education, whether it be from the inside of the classroom or outside. If you have a good story to tell, we'd love to hear it. Email us at contact at andredowdy.org. We'd love to have you or your story on a future episode. See What Had Happened starts now. Welcome to See What Had Happened, where we hear stories in education from the good, the bad, and everything in between. We are your co-hosts, Danielle and Andre Dowdy. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you are not new to this podcast, welcome back. Hey. <laughs> all right. Make sure you follow us on all podcast platforms. We are there. All right. Hey, shout out to all of those who's followed us from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, also, shout out to all of you all who have been watching on YouTube. Ah, we see you. Thanks for the views. We're just doing this because this is what we love to do. We love to share and talk about the stories and education from the good, the bad, and everything in between. And that's kind of what we're doing here today. Yes, we are. And speaking of that, mm -hmm. what are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, today's story it comes from uh, an elementary teacher. Uh, and this elementary teacher would be this guy uh, mm -hmm. right here. Uh, to set up this story, have you ever had a phone call from a student really late? Like the, I cannot say that I have. How about from a parent? Someone in education call you like at that late in the midnight hour when you and everybody else should be asleep. <laughs> I will say yes, but the way that technology is set up these Day, uh -huh. We had it on sleep mode or uh, what do you call it? Office hours mm -hmm. where they, you couldn't. Well, they couldn't. Yeah, you wouldn't get into the. Yeah you, could, <laughs> yeah, you didn't see the message till the next day. Mm -hmm. So back in, back in your time. Back in my day. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how we set up that story. Uh, at this particular school, we had a cutoff, and the cutoff was at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Phones off. Don't accept a call, don't accept an email. Quit doing work. I broke that all of the time. Oh, but the at time. nine o'clock, everything is shut down, shut off, so you can spend time with your family. Nine o'clock, I'm be asleep. And at nine o'clock nowadays, <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to. Your brain's supposed to be in rest mode, you know. Uh, but for whatever instance, for whatever reason, nine o'clock just typically did not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's where this story begins here. Okay. <clears throat> At our school, uh, every school has this. They have, you know, those those teachers where students really connect to, connect with. You know, uh, I know I wasn't always the most popular teacher. That could have been someone else. And for other students, perhaps they did see me as a really popular teacher because I connected with them more or I had characteristics that they liked or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like that here. And uh, there was this one student, let's call her Pinky. Why pinky? Because your mouse is pink. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> we had student uh, Pinky, and Pinky was bright. Pinky was one of the smartest students I'd ever taught. But Pinky didn't care for school. Hmm. School was not her space. She was intelligent. She could do the work. But she didn't really find reason to attend. Why should I go? Hmm. I can do the basics and survive because I see there are so many other adults out here who's smart uh, and they're surviving and I'm smarter than them and they're the adults, you know. I, mm. So Pinky was very street smart and she was like, this is enough for me. I, I, don't, I don't need to do any more of this. Okay. And so talking to Pinky oftentimes in preaching or 
whatever, motivating, inspiring. Like, there is more that you can do besides. And Pinky was like, ah, I just, eh, eh. And I get it because Pinky had a hard life. Mm. You know, her entire family, uh, they did the best that they could do. And, and it was a really rough and challenging life. Mm. Well, you establish those relationships with students. Mm-hmm. And you continue to inspire. Of course, they're seeing you up at the school with the babies. And so they're seeing how I love you. They're seeing how other teachers are loving their spouses and their partners. And, and so Pinky kind of saw that a little bit and saw how much I always tried to protect. And Pinky had a baby brother. Baby brother, maybe infant, maybe three, four months, maybe. I mean, little tiny little thing. Um, And Pinky would oftentimes have to, you know, take care of baby Mm. while mom was at work. And so that sets up this entire story. That entire week we were working hard and and for whatever reason, that week came like had to have been like a full moon because all the kids were on one. Mm. They were absolutely just everywhere. And it was very challenging to keep them focused that entire week. And that entire week, I remember also having all of these homework phone calls at night. Now, I'm a very thorough person when I teach. And then when I explain directions of homework, also very thorough. So then you don't have as many hiccups and phone calls at night. But for whatever reason, that week, lots of phone calls, lots of, hey, Mr. Dowdy, can you, can you, rephrase can you can we tomorrow morning reteach this I I need help a whole bunch of it so I was kind of upset at myself for having this many phone calls Mm. I was also upset because I'm like I know I'm explaining it well these kids aren't listening they're distracted you know so in my mind I'm going to preach it to them and I'm going to give them some of that business in the blues the next day So it is nine o'clock. The two kids are now in the beds, been in the bed, like their bedtime, 738 or whatever. We had already finished watching Scandal. And so it's nine o'clock. It's time to shut down. The food's already put up. I mean, the house is done. So it's nine o'clock. We go to sleep. No phone call, no anything. The news comes on at 10. Everything's great. It's 11.15, 11.30. We're now like in that fifth, fifth dimension of sleep. Do you remember the story? I do not. Okay. So we're in the fifth dimension of sleep. And somewhere midnight, 1.30 range, my phone rings. And it had the special ring because it was the student's uh, ringtone. And I wake up and I look at the clock first because this is back when we used to have like the analog clock still on the nightstand. And I'm looking at the time and it is way past bedtime. And so I let it ring two or three times and then it quits. And then it calls again with the same student ring. So now I'm saying, oh, we about to wake up, baby. We about to wake up my, my wife. Oh, This student is about to be in all of the trouble in the world. So I look at the phone and I see the number and I don't recognize the number. Uh, And so that student must know who it is because it's got the student ringtone. Mm -hmm. I pick up the phone and I'm about to chew whoever this is out. And I say, hello. And then they say, Mr. Dowdy, what, what do I do? And so now I wake up because the voice is scared and trembling. Mm. And the student says, what do I do? Wait, wait, whoa. What's going on? Uh, Mr. Dowdy, Mr. Dowdy. And while I'm doing this, I'm hearing in the background of her her call, um, lots of screaming. Lots of, it sounds like something's being thrown against a wall type of a thing. And so now I go from being upset and frustrated to now attentively listening, trying to figure out what's happening and why this student is whispering. And I'm like, why are you whispering? And the student says, I'm in the closet hiding. 
So now full alert, I'm wide awake. What's going on? I recognize the student's voice. It is Pinky. Pinky, what's going on? Talk to me. And she said, um, we were all in the bed. We were all resting. And a drunk boyfriend came home. And drunk boyfriend uh, starts to beat up on mama. Mm. And I said, what? And then drunk boyfriend was trying to beat up on her. She took off running. And then while she's explaining it to me, you hear this huge clump. And it sounds like someone being body slammed onto something. <sighs> and so now I'm like, we got to get off this phone to call 911, but I can't do that because Pinky lives in the hood. And in this particular part of the hood, the police don't show up. Mm. Just calling reality like it is. So on our house phone, I'm trying to find my friend who is a police officer, his number, so I can get him to this this place to, to offer some assistance, some help. And I said, well, Pinky, where's baby brother? She said, baby brother's in my arms, uh, and I've got the pacifier. We were just trying to stay as quiet as possible. And while Pinky is still explaining it to me, you hear the front door open up and slam. Like an aggressive two-hand slam. And you're hearing screaming. So in my mind, it's registering that drunk boyfriend is dragging mama out the front door. And she's kicking and screaming, trying to fight it. Mm. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? It's quiet in the house now. Can can you peek outside of the blind to see something? And so she's trying to peek outside of the blinds. And in some way or another, um, mama is fighting with drunk boyfriend. And it appears like they're trying to take the keys, not take the keys. This is the car. No, this is my car. Like there's there's some struggle there. And then through the phone, I hear the loudest scream I have ever heard. It was a screech that even till this day, I can still hear it and it breaks my heart. And the screech was drunk boyfriend slamming mama's head in the car door. Mm, my goodness. Hmm. And then it was silence on the phone because Pinky had witnessed it. Mm. So I said, okay, Pinky, we, we got to get you and baby brother safe. Um, is there anybody nearby that you all can run to? Anything so you can go check on mama. Um, Pinky runs next door to uh, a friend, a neighbor who kind of babysat them, watched over them or whatever. And uh, everybody in the neighborhood, they were eye hustling. You know, they were looking outside and, and seeing it through their blinds and their curtains or whatever, uh, not offering much help. Mm -hmm. And so I told Pinky, you got to hang up with me. Uh, police, he is on his way. And, you know, gave policeman's name to Pinky, gave address, did all of that. And I said, you can trust this police person. They're, they're, they're family. They're family. Uh, we used to say team and family. They're team, they're team and family. This is a person you can trust. They are on their way. They're en route. And so uh, I hang up with Pinky. And Pinky um, goes next door to, to, to mom's friend, neighbor. Um, and then I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. So now I'm looking at you, I'm looking at our new kid, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm broken. So, okay. Whew. Let me let me call principal. Uh principal doesn't pick up the phone. So I said, okay, uh first thing in the morning, I'll have a quick conversation with all of Pinky's teachers to let them know Pinky probably not gonna be at school. Here's why. Let's do some follow-up. Um, the school had some community members who were also police people. 
Um, I, you know, let me talk to the counselor. So the counselor, let me talk to Pinky's pastor uh, who had been up at the school. You know, all these different things as well. Um, get to school early, bright in morning. Talk to the principal. Hey, principal, check this out. Here's what happened. Here's the phone call. Um, heads up. I don't know what's going to happen, but heads up. And while I'm talking to principal, who walks through the door? Pinky. Mm -hmm. Pinky's got on wrinkled clothes. Her hair is not done. But Pinky is at school. And I will look at Pinky and I walk up to her. And I know it's against the law. Well, not really against the law. It's not a, a, a good practice. It's not best practice to hug students. And then even... Um, in in terms of relationship building, uh, hugging of an opposite sex, I, I, I get that. I 100% get that. In that moment, I went up to Pinky. She comes and hugs me and cries in my arm. Mm -hmm. So quick prayer, loud and proud to Pinky. And you look at her eyes and her eyes are, are beet red because Pinky's had no sleep. Okay, Pinky, let's do this. Go to my room. Here's my keys to the room. Turn off the lights. I'll have one or two of your friends bring your breakfast. <clears throat> Get some sleep. We got at least a strong 35, 45 minutes before class. Get some sleep. Mm -hmm. So uh, Pinky takes the keys. She also took my backpack or whatever. Uh, goes into the room. Her friends uh, grab their breakfast and their lunch. And they go, go all eat breakfast with Pinky in my room. Um, I run up to all of the teachers who are Pinky's teachers and I said, okay, we're leaving Pinky alone today. If all of the days we don't mess with Pinky mm -hmm. who don't want to be at school, mm -hmm. this is the day. Mm -hmm. Principal, don't mess with Pinky. Pinky. Principal's like, I'll check on her. Vice principal, who Pinky did not like, don't mess with her. This is not the day. All of Pinky's other teachers... This leave is not, Pinky B. Leave her be. So, mm. uh, school day starts. First hour goes. Pinky is in the room with us, um, and she. I had Pinky first hour, so that's that's even better. We can start the day off in a great way. I had Pinky. We did a lot of. I remember doing lots of group activities that day. wasn't very lecture based at all uh, because I knew she just needed some type of normalcy. And we really didn't teach on curriculum that day. It was more just a whole bunch of team building. Hey, let's do this activity, fun type of icebreaker type of games. Uh, threw one or two chants in there just to prep them up, you know. So the class was crunk. Everybody excited. Class is lit. Uh, great. Pinky didn't have books, backpack, nothing. She just showed up. Right. Pinky, no big deal. How much paper you need? Here's a notebook. You know, here's pen. You need .5 lead. Whatever it is, you know. Um, we finish first hour. Pinky is smiling. I'm like, this is a victory. Mm -hmm. Now it's passing period. Uh, teachers go stand in the hall, of course. You know, and students are going to the next class. I look at uh, the next teacher. And once again, like, given the today is not the day to mess with Pinky. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, other teachers see Pinky in the hall and they're not overly giving her hugs and, you know, trying to like make her stand out. But you can tell that we are loving on Pinky this day mm -hmm. and she is receiving and welcoming and open to the love. And so I go on about my day teaching second hour, teaching third hour in the middle of third hour. I hear a door slam as hard as I've ever heard a door slam in a school. And then I hear Pinky giving the teacher the most cuss words I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. And Pinky was serving every one of those words that I'd never heard her say. Mm -hmm. And she let this teacher have it. And so now this teacher is making a scene in the hall with Pinky. And so... Did this teacher... 
did this teacher know of her situation? Mm -hmm. Um, mm. And so I'm in the middle teaching and I hear the commotion in the hallway as did pretty much the entire school. Mm. (laughs) So I quit teaching and I opened the door and I'm just, it felt like slow motion. Pinky, no! And Pinky is given every bit of cursing and verbal abuse. And I mean, just no mercy. So now this teacher is really upset and, you know, talking suspension and expulsion and mm. get her out of the school. She doesn't mm. deserve to be at the school. Da, 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 da. Hmm. And so Pinky, you can tell Pinky has blacked out. Hmm. And Pinky, I don't beat this school no way. And the gentleman just really giving it to him. Um, Vice principal comes out. And then, the, once the again. The one Pinky doesn't like. Right. This is not <laughs> the day. So, vice principal is trying to grab Pinky. Mm. Saying, let's go to the office now. Mm. Get off me. You know you know how students are. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell the students in my class, keep working. They all laughing and giggling and talking. Because Pinky gave everybody enough ammunition for the rest of the day to laugh and talk about it. I go to the office and um, the teacher is really upset that Pinky cussed her out. And the vice principal is upset that Pinky cussed her out. And we had to have an emergency meeting that afternoon, emergency, emergency staff meeting. And I remember sharing, like, or well, all of us, there were several teachers who were saying that, like, We told you not to mess with Pinky today. Out of all the days, we told you not to mess with Pinky. And uh, once when they really found out how severe the night was, then, of course, you know, a lot of the the response came, a lot of the heartbreak and, oh, I'm so sorry, I should have. I really shouldn't have. And it was all over because Pinky didn't come to class with her books Mm. her homework and she didn't finish her assignments Mm. I hear a lot in that story Mm -hmm. first I hear even though Pinky had a horrific night she still came to school Mm -hmm. so that tells me for a lot of our students, school is a safe place. It's a safe haven. Yeah. So she knew that she could find safety and security there, even though she didn't like the the aspect of school. Mm-hmm. You know. And then this story also says to me that students come to us with different situations and backgrounds and and things that happen to them. And we as educators need to be more empathetic. We need to know how to read the room. Mm-hmm. Now, if the teacher knew beforehand that Pinky had a rough night, why is the teacher pushing the buttons? Right. And then if the AP knew beforehand of Pinky's situation, why is she or he, whoever, pushing the button? Right. Can't poke the bear. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, as educators, we we might have a set agenda and we have things uh, to cross cross off our to-do list. Mm -hmm. But you have to keep in mind what is going on in the lives of these babies. Right. Sometimes you just have to, what's your word? Pivot. Pivot. Straight up. Um, It breaks my heart still retelling the story. Mm Mm-hmm. Because no student should see their mom abused in that manner. Right. No student should bear that responsibility of protecting a mm-hmm. sibling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we would love for every one of our students to have that fairy tale type of life when they leave school mm -hmm. where you know the loving family nothing goes wrong everything is right you know bubbles and happiness and bells and whistles and mm -hmm. birds chirping mm -hmm. and for a lot of our students they deal with life rougher than what our generation had Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And even when that happens, they still show up. They still show up. There is a reason why they still show up. Yeah. Because you think, boy, if that happened to me, I'm not going to school. Right. I'm not worried about going to school. But there is some there was something there in that environment. You as teacher maybe her peers, you know, maybe it was a, a, a safe haven, an escape mm -hmm. from what she experienced. But, oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers has a quote, and I'm going to say this quote so wrong, but it's something about when tragedy happens and you feel afraid or scared, Always look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. Because those helpers will mm -hmm. always be there. Mm -hmm. And so um, sitting back and reflecting upon this with other teachers, you know, when we did the debrief at the end of the day in the emergency meeting and we kind of discussed what happened, what are the steps, what can we do to help, who knows somebody, who knows somebody who can help this situation, you know, mm -hmm. we did all of that. Um, one of them brought that up and that's what really hit home for me. Mm -hmm. They were like, Daddy, you don't know this, but she trusted you enough mm -hmm. to call you that late that night because she was scared. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if it was because my name was the A and I'm the first name of the list. I, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then, for whatever reason, on that night, I picked up the phone. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, to see that she needed some support that day and got a hug, got breakfast, felt in a good place, showed up, was still learning in her own way. Um, that really made, you know, those feel good moments that you get goosebumps on your skin as teachers. That was definitely it. Um, it also was it for me hearing that she was cursing out the teacher. As controversial as it may seem, mm -hmm. there are times we just need to not poke a bear. <laughs> what, what is it you gonna learn today? You gonna learn today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we as adults in these schools have power mm -hmm. over students. Mm -hmm. But there are so many times that we assert that power when we don't need to. Hmm. So what? Pinky didn't have a homework. You so, telling me? You telling me you couldn't let that go for one day? Right. So one, what? At least one day. Pinky didn't come to class prepared. All she had was some paper and some pencils, some lead. That. And you knew the background story. Yeah. That that's what's getting me. Yeah. Or even if you didn't know the background story, if the teachers say today is not the day to mess with Pinky. That alone yeah. should have been like, okay, Pinky, we're going to let you sit over there. And we know that you're going to pay attention in your own way. We'll, we'll circle back around and see how you do. Um, and that's even what the counselor said. The counselor said, well, good for Pinky. She had a whole bunch of aggression <laughs> built up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she didn't know who to release it on. Mm -hmm. And um, she found two worthy people to release those frustrations. Um, from there and I think looking back on this now if this ever happens in your school uh, just always be aware be mindful read the room read the room because there are students who deal with much worse and heavier oh yeah I mean some of our today's students are dealing with grown up adult issues Yes. Pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. But yet they come to our classroom and we try to figure out why they're disconnected from school or we try to figure out why they aren't paying attention to our lessons, or whatever it may be. Sometimes if you were to just to peel back the layers, 
you would see how challenging it is for so many of our students. Whether it be the peer pressures of trying to be AP courses and, and stay at the top of a class and the stresses and the anxiety of that. Or um, I'm even thinking of like our high school students getting accepted into the schools that they want or mm -hmm. are they getting scholarships? Can they afford their next plan or their next career? There's so much. Mm -hmm. And if we only look at them as, as our students as, you didn't turn in your homework. <laughs> might get cussed out <laughs> so don't do that okay don't do that let's not uh, and pinky uh try not to cuss out your teachers let's not let's try your best to use better words but that's okay if you did use those words um as my as i tell my used to tell my students let's make a better vocabulary yeah. choice <laughs> yeah. There's there's some science that says those students, uh, people who curse, are smarter, <laughs> or they use some type of different type of intellectual things, and and they are smart. Okay, if that's you, great. Try not to. Let's not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the end, uh, Pinky continued to come to school. Great. She continued to hate school. Mm. She hated it even more after that. I would imagine and, so. Yeah, and it took a long time for her to to not hate school as much. For her, it was a necessary evil mm -hmm. because she was smart enough to know that if she stays home, um, child protective services would come for truancy and all the other stuff. Um, she, she just did not like what school represented. Mm -hmm. She felt that she could learn so much more without it. I still keep in touch with Pinky. Pinky is on social media. Um, and every now and then, uh, I'll get a DM from Pinky just saying, hey, Mr. Dowdy, how you doing? Did and she cut you out? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> she does not. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, she she's a really good, well, she's an, a grown person now. Uh, but it's real cool to see that. And to see even Pinky's mom now, how Pinky's mom is is a pillar in the community and how Pinky's mom, uh, she real good people as well. Yeah. If you know someone who is experiencing abuse or you suspect someone is experiencing abuse, please reach out to your local authorities, um, reach out to your counselor, um, to police and, uh, a abuse hotline that is mm -hmm. in your area. Yeah. It is, it is very well needed. Um, keep your eyes very vigilant in protecting our students in these situations. Um, and just like what Mr. Rogers said earlier, there's always going to be someone. Look for that some person. And that some person may be you. Mm -hmm. If you see something, you got to say something. Say something. Well, today's episode was a heavy one. And we thank you for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on all social media platforms. And don't forget to join us on the next episode of See What Had Happened. Bye. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcasts.